Okay, so maybe uh, you can say a couple of words and then uh, we can give the floor to Igor. All right, so um, I see that the majority is still not here, but let's begin. So hello everyone, uh, we have a great pleasure to welcome you all here to the first uh, NG seminar in a series of webinars which are focused on technologies used in bioinformatics. Uh, as you know, unfortunately, due to the ongoing situation, we were forced to cancel, uh, cancel our NG school and NG symposium events this year that we are really looking forward to. That said, we hope that our um, that our webinars over the next couple of weeks will provide you with uh, knowledge and skills valuable in your career and that you will enjoy them. So during the webinars and also after them, we encourage you to ask questions in the uh, text channels. This time it is the Linux command line channel uh, on Discord and uh, the speakers the speaker will try and answer them the recordings of the webinars will also be published on our youtube channel uh, about a couple of a couple of days from uh, now uh, i assume um, our first presenter today is phd uh, igor zubertsky an assistant professor at the wood university of technology and he's going to give you a short introduction to linux and command line so Without further ado, the mic is yours, Igor. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Igor. I will be running uh, today's webinar. Uh, the webinar, I uh, created some files for you to download. Uh, this uh, should be already on uh, the NGS School uh, repository. Uh, these are uh, files about this workshop. The workshop is about pretty much Linux terminal and bash. Uh, Linux terminal is something that uh, is very important uh, for all of people that are creating uh, software and especially uh, in such fields uh, like bioinformatics uh, or my field. My field is machine learning and robotics. Uh, we pretty much use the command line all the time. And it may seem strange because um, compared to a GUI, so graphical user interface programs, uh, this is kind of awkward. You, uh, you see this black screen. I am sharing a bl <laughs> black screen right now to you. This is called Terminal. Uh, and so you need to put all of the comments by just typing them. Uh, so why bother? Uh, there are so many uh, beautiful graphical programs that you can choose from. Uh, and they are usually you can find a program that does a similar function to the one that you can run on Terminal. But there are a couple of differences. The biggest difference is that you can control stuff much more precisely. So compared to a graphical user interface where you have to click some buttons and then you get a result, and you will have a hard time to repeat this. Imagine that uh, you need somebody to repeat the same commands that you typed, uh, that you clicked. This would be quite bothersome. Uh, I don't know if you have uh, had this case, but for example, um, Sometimes, um, for example, my grandmother wants me to explain her something by phone, uh, and she's using graphical user interfaces. So how can I uh, guide her uh, without seeing what she's seeing? But when you are using Terminal, it is much easier uh, to run just the same commands on many different computers. So for example, when you want uh, to have somebody uh, do exactly what you are doing, uh, she can just uh, run uh, the same script that uh, you have run. Uh, and this is very nice because you will have precisely the same result. Of course, depending on whether you have the same data, the same system, and so on. Uh, the other thing is that it gives you power. Uh, so uh, because you are in control, you can usually run multiple commands connected one to another and uh, creating something called pipelines. And these pipe pipelines are is a very powerful idea. Actually, this is something that um, was from the beginning of Unix systems. So not even Linux systems, but Unix systems, something like 40 or 50 years ago. Uh, the idea that you just connect one program to another. This, this is really hard to imagine using graphical user interface, 
but you will see today that it is very easy to do uh, using Terminal. So I hope that you can see the terminal I'm using. Uh, this is uh, I'm running this on on something called Lubuntu, which is a lightweight version of Ubuntu. Um, but the terminal looks pretty much the same on, on all Linux machines, unless you decide to prettify it. Actually, I had to switch off my prettification because normally I uh, have many more colors. Uh, uh, to make my uh, to make my job easier, but normally you will have something like what I have right now on the screen. You will have your username uh, at your host name, and then you will see um, the current directory you are in. This is called prompt, especially that you can see that there is a dollar sign at the end, and this means that you, a normal user, is right now in some particular folder on some particular computer. You can um, have a problem understanding why it is important. But for example, in my current job, I uh, sometimes on one day uh, have to log in for like five computers. And uh, without knowing that I, right now I'm on my home computer, the Igor Duży means in Poland, uh, like big Igor, because it is my, my largest computer I have. Uh, like with the most amount of RAM and, and a good GPU. But I have many more computers that I uh, sometimes log in just from the terminal. So it is very important to me to know that I'm right now at this particular computer. Also, it is very nice to know that right now my username is Igor. But for example, on this computer, I have many more accounts. And uh, they, of course, change with uh, w when I log in for a different account, I will get a, a different name here. So I said that after uh, that, there is the um, folder name. So the folder name, you can see that there is something called Zababa, uh, Bash, Bash Workshop. Uh, but there is a tilde sign before that. And the tilde sign is something that is quite important to Linux system. We can uh, use first of our commands. So what you do is you just type on the prompt. So I will write pwd. And this is uh, this this command means that it will print my current uh, directory, and my current directory is actually not tilde, zabave, etc., etc. But you can see that there is home Igor because the tilde is pretty much then just a shortcut for your current uh, for your home directory. So by just doing tilde by itself. Uh, should it work here? Yeah. So by just doing, the, I, right now I use the, a command uh, called echo, and the echo is just a command like a print in Python, just just to print a text on a screen. So I ask I ask and the bash uh, to uh, print my uh, my home directory, and it showed that my home directory right now is home ego. So what we are using right now, um, like uh, I know that uh, that we have a chat. So hopefully, most of you can ask questions, but I also can ask questions to you. So my question is, Is everybody? Uh, does everybody have an open terminal right now? And if not, uh, do you maybe have some problems opening terminal on your system? Because it is quite important for all of you to at least have this um, before your eyes. Um, because, for example, if you uh, find something more difficult, you can ask questions. Um, I hope that this, this workshop will be mostly beneficial for the people who follow, uh, not so much uh, to afterwards, because we are trying to do it in an interactive way. And so I hope that everybody has um, has terminal open. I know that some of you will be working from, from Windows. Um, on Windows, you also can have like a terminal simulators. Uh, on the newest system, so like uh, Windows 10, you can actually have just a Ubuntu terminal. Um, on on systems uh, uh, such as uh, such as Ubuntu, it is just a matter of clicking a button for for terminal. It is usually on your screen, uh, on on the most left part of the screen. You will have a button with a black uh, black icon, uh, and uh, on Mac. Uh, on Mac computers, which also use uh, Bash, uh, you will have some other way to open terminal. I really don't know how, 
but I hope that you manage this. So um, I hope that everybody has this terminal open. Uh, Litka is here looking for uh, for the uh, for the chat. So I hope that uh, we know that everybody is okay. Uh, so starting right now, when you click this, so when you typed echo uh, tilde, uh, you uh, put a comment to a bash. So um, bash uh, is uh, something called uh, a, sh a shell. So it is a, a terminal program that connects your computer to shell. So what is a shell? Uh, it is like a bunch of programs that are on every Unix system or every Linux system that, that enable you to do many things. So right now you are connecting to your system. So your, your basic uh, Linux system. And Bash is uh, one of many different uh, shells. Uh, shell is like a way for you to interact with your basic system. Uh, there are many different uh, shells. Bash is just the uh, most popular uh, one. Uh, it is like a born again shell, uh, but uh, you can also uh, find many, many more. Uh, you, my recommendation for the beginners is try to stick to Bash uh, because you, you can find uh, the most uh, help uh, using Bash. Yes, I read the comment that uh, my screen letters are too small. So I will maybe try to, to make it bigger. Okay. Is it better right now? Hopefully, yes. Uh, okay. So, so, yes, yeah, so the comment was echo tilde. Uh, we received home Igor. Um, so okay, so from from the theoretical perspective, uh, what you care about is that you right now you have access to the whole Linux system by using terminal. You are not limited by any program. Uh, you can pretty much uh, do whatever you want on your computer right now. By whatever you want, I mean uh, operations such as, uh, for example. Uh, Topping your uh, CPU, or you can, for example, measure the temperature of some part of your computer. Uh, you can um, do a lot of stuff um, because uh, Linux, compared to uh, Windows, uh, has this strange feature that pretty much everything is either a file or a stream of data, but pretty much you will access it, it as a file. So you don't really have like a registry, uh, like a strange program that does stuff, but you always have just uh, files to play with. It can be dangerous because by just deleting some files, you can, you can break your computer. Uh, but it is also very convenient because you just need to write some script uh, to, to, ch to change your computer to the way you want. Mm. So just for your information, the name terminal and the name shell is not the same. Terminal is just the way to access your computer. By saying that you have a terminal access, it means that you are using a keyboard. Uh, and through this keyboard, you type your commands and you receive these commands uh, usually uh, to your screen. In the past, the terminal was sometimes something that you put a command on your keyboard and you received the output for printing. So there was something just getting printed. Of course, it would be very bothersome, but sometimes it is nice to, <laughs> to have some way of documenting your commands. Um, OK, so let's start uh, with uh, navigating around uh, the bash terminal. We started with one of the commands. The command was uh, pwd, uh, and it showed you that we right now uh, we are in uh, in this folder. Uh, so yeah, the question was, what is the difference between terminal and console? It is pretty much the same. Terminals and console is pretty much the same. It is uh, the you 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 can use it in the same context. Uh, okay, so uh, we are right now in a uh, in a folder where I have this repository. Try to find your uh, your repository so you know where you downloaded it. 
because <laughs> you will need to access it. Uh, this PWD meant that we right now know where we are, but when you start your terminal, you will be probably here. So you will be in your home directory. Uh, when you want to move from a home directory to another directory, you use a command called change directory. The change directory is CD, so it is not like a CD-ROM, but it is because change directory. Uh, but the shortcuts are really inconsistent on Linux. So sometimes uh, the shortcuts don't mean anything connected to the command. But this one does. So CD is a command meaning change directory. So when I want to change directory, uh, first I can look what directories do I have. In my case, there are so many directories and so many files. Uh, ls uh, is a command for listing everything uh, on directory. So maybe I will change to a smaller one. Zabava is a place where I put uh, all of interesting stuff. Still, it is quite big, but the command ls, so list, um, is a command that will show you all directories and all files. Uh, yeah, in my case, uh, the directories are blue and the files are um, <laughs> Are of different colors, but it really depends on the particular shell settings that you have. Um, I changed the directory using cd and the name of the directory. So I'm right now, I am in home Igor Zababa, and I will now switch to a bash uh, directory. Uh, and this is uh, qu quite important. What I will I will uh, teach you the first hack that will change you from a normal user to a power user. And this is that I can type CD, then I can type some first letters, so I know that it starts with bash, but I forgot the whole command. And I can use the tab key. So I'm right now I'm clicking the tab key, and with, it, it will auto-complete the command. So, I, I needed only to put the BA and then I click, then I use the, bash, the tab key and it suggested to me that this is probably bash uh, that I want. Actually, when I just start from one letter, so for example, you can see that it, in this one folder, uh, I have so many uh, directories started at M. So when I put an M letter and then I use the tab key, it will show me all the alternatives. So I need to put more letters for the system to be able to autocomplete. So CDM and tab will not give me the right directory, but CD and M, for example, MO will just <laughs> give me two, di two uh, alternatives and then and I'm uh, up to one. So. I will, I will use the bash. I have quite complicated uh, directory structure. So then, so I will, uh, from, from this bash ss, I will go to bash workshop. And right now I am in the right directory. So, uh, so this is one way to access the directory. So as you uh, saw, I just went from one directory to another directory to another directory. It can be quite bothersome. So let's imagine that I want to repeat that. I want to go to the to this directory, but but without using these steps by just using one step. So I will I will come back to the home directory. So I, I do cd tilde. I am back to the main directory. And now I want to uh, go to this directory. So home, Igor, Zapata, and so on. So I can put the whole address. I, I'm using tilde, uh, but this is because why not? But I can switch from one di directory to another directory by putting the whole address. You can see that this address compared to the one uh, before has more elements. So it has this home, Igor, Zabava, um, and this is called absolute path. So when you hear on a Linux system something called absolute path, it means that 
it will start from the root directory. So it will start from this uh, first slash. So then usually you will have something like home and so on. And this is like your whole, whole address. So compared to like a map, this is your GPS address because it gives you like an absolute position on the world map. So we know that you are on Earth on this particular uh, address. Uh, so th this is what I what I put, so CD home and so on. But there is another way, so let's go back to the main directory. Uh, I can also put the relative address. So th this would be another hack to you. By using your arrow keys, so right now I will be using the up arrow key on your, on your keyboard. I hope you, you can see the keyboard, but I'm just using the up arrow key. You can go through the history of your previous commands. So I can I can now switch through these previous commands. There is the, the one I put just before. You can go by, by this arrow key to the many previous uh, commands before. But this is one that is interesting. I can also put a relative path. So the relative path will start without slash. So this is this is path without slash, this is just CDs above and so on. And it means from the current directory you are in, go to Zabave, go to bash, go to bash workshop. So this is a relative path to the current directory. So we will go by using this, we end up at the same place that we, uh, uh, the same place that the previous uh, command, but this is only the case when we start from the same place. So for example, when I use this command again, so even though I am in the same directory, right? So I am already in this directory. I am already in the bash workshop directory. I can repeat this command and nothing bad happens. But when I try to repeat this command, I received an error and this error uh, gives me an explanation that there is no such a file or directory because it is a relative path to the place I am now. So I am now in Bash Workshop, so there is no Zabave in Bash Workshop. So I cannot go there. So of course there is no such file or directory. So you can imagine that if you want to make something quite robust, that it is always in the same place. You, For example, you know that there is a directory on each computer you will be using in a particular place. You will use absolute path. But contrasted to that, if you want to do something that is always relative to the particular place the user is in, you will use relative path. So um, this absolute path has this uh, beginning. So compared to the map, this is like old school map when you have the end of the world and the beginning of the world. Like you, you can imagine a world being on a turtle and we are not, right now, we want to go to the edge of the world. So this edge of the world on a Linux system is the root. So I can go to this root. It is quite strange that I will go to the slash, but I actually, I can do that. I am right now I am in a slash folder and this slash is a root folder. Either, uh, this will just give me the slash folder. It is a root, and in all Linux systems, it is a place for system files. So this is a place where you put, actually the system usually puts all of stuff. One of this stuff is your home folder. So when we list this folder, we will see that there is something called home, but it is not the only thing that it is here. You can see that there are many more. Some of them are strange, like you can see that there is a CD-ROM folder. Like I, I actually, on this computer, I don't have a CD-ROM, but there is a CD-ROM folder. Uh, there is also an interesting folder that we will go to uh, called dev, and this is for all of the devices. But you also have root folders, you have bin folders, you have sbin folders, and uh, many more, because it is like a, all, all of this, this uh, heart of your computer, of your Linux computer. So let's go to the dev folder. Actually, sorry for the people using simulators. Probably this will not work for you, but 
for the Linux people it will. In this dev folder, we have many different folders, uh, folders on, or files. And these uh, this files uh, are actually quite interesting because each of these files or, or folder is something connected to a device that I have on my computer. So these are physical devices. For example, video zero, the, la the, the near near the second last um, device is uh, my camera. So if I um, connect another camera to my system, I will have video zero and video one. Uh, this might be less uh, important to uh, a software people of you, but I can imagine that some of you will uh, be working on some kind of for example, a biomedical robot, or you, you, to your computer, there will be connected some, some device for DNA analysis. And this device will be probably here in some way or another. You can see that there are many different files. And um, I really don't uh, know what to do with, the, uh, with them, unless I do uh, the same command, so the ls command, but I will add something called flag. So flag um, is uh, a modification to a command. So I have a command called ls, and now I ask this command to do something more. So in this case, I can do two things. So lsa will, uh, will give me all of files. So right now, when I did the ls and ls a, the difference is kind of hard to see, but at the beginning of this list, there are two more files. And one of this file is a dot, and the second of these files is two dots. These are hidden files. Actually, these are hidden folders or hidden directories. These directories, the, the dot directory is a current directory, and the dot dot directory is a directory one uh, one above the current one. So uh, the the flag minus a means please show me all of files, not only the files that are easy to see. You know, on a Linux system, when a command starts with dot, it means that uh, not a uh, not a command but a file when it when it starts with dot or directory when it starts with dot, it means that we don't want user to see it. So for example, when you want to make a hidden directory, for example, for a hidden settings, you will make a directory starting with dot. On Windows, you usually have to click something and like make hidden directory. But on a Linux, you just need to make a directory with a dot at the beginning. So right now I put a flag minus A, but I can also put minus L. And this minus L, is uh, uh, let's see the result. We will get something like that. It is quite long list. It is um, uh, a long format list. So by by using the ls minus a minus l. For by the way, for those of you who don't have the def, you can you can do the same uh, on our uh, on our Zabava directory. So I will show you another way to access the same uh, directory. We can go to cd tilde slash Zabava, and it pretty much means from the home directory, go to Zabava, go to bash, go to bash workshop. You will probably need to go to somewhere else. I really don't know where you need to go, because it depends on where did you put the directories from the repository. Uh, for those of you who have still problem putting uh, this directory somewhere, for example, you are not proficient with, with Git, just please download this as a file. You have an option uh, to, download this, uh, to download the repository as a file and unzip it somewhere. On a Linux system, um, when you have a directory uh, on the address bar, you can click Control L and it will show you the absolute path to this directory. But for for those of you who are following, right now I'm doing CD tilde as above, and I am on my uh, on my base directory. There is a directory called exercise files. 
I, I can do the same what I did before, but I will do ls minus al, and it is a shortcut. It just means that I'm using two flags in the same time. It does not mean minus al, it means minus a minus l, but just I'm putting this together. So right now I'm in a in a directory called called exercise files, and there are two files there. Uh, by the, by using ls minus al, uh, I did this long list. So you can see on my screen the result of ls minus al for the dev folder, and you can see the same for the exercise uh, folder. The difference is that there are just many more files on the dev folder. Uh, you can uh, I'm playing around with this uh, on the readme file. You you can read the the idea behind the readme file uh, for this workshop is that you will do this afterwards. This is like a way for you to uh, for remember. Can all flags be combined like minus l uh, minus al? It is a hard question actually because. Uh, it really depends whether the developer of particular um, software kept to um, some standards. So it is up to developer how he interprets the flags. Usually, yes. So usually you can combine flags. But for example, some beginner uh, programmers will not combine flags. So it really depends on the quality of software you are using. Usually, yes. Uh, we will go to some details how you can actually see what is possible in a moment. So right, right now we are in this exercise files. Uh, maybe I will, uh, we will come back to this later because uh, it is quite important what is going on here. But um, yeah, okay, so uh, let's interpret uh, what this command gave you. So ls minus al. You can see that it is kind of like a table format. This uh, this table has multiple uh, columns. Uh, this this first column seems like kind of cryptic because you see that there is minus r w x. Then there is one. There is Igor Igor. And then there is fifty two. Then there is actually date in Polish, and uh, you can see after all of this the file name. So uh, why there's so much stuff? Uh, uh, really, because it is quite important, especially on a Unix system. Imagine that you are using a, like a server computer. So for example, Litka, uh, she is using a, a server uh, in her work on the uh, university in Warsaw. And there, uh, there are, this, this computer has like, what, 200 gigabytes of RAM, something like that? More than 300. 300 gigabytes of RAM, like a super powerful uh, uh, processor and so on. It's a, it is a very nice computer um, that many people access. So in the same time, like Litka is logged into this computer, um, her coworkers are uh, connected to computer. Hopefully, no hackers are com connected to the computer, but of course, we're not sure. So. Uh, how, how you can make one computer to be used by multiple users. Imagine uh, that one of uh, her colleagues wants, uh, for example, to steal her data. So she doesn't want to show the data uh, to her. And uh, conversely, you have another user that you won't show uh, your data. So the first stuff, so the, the one that you see this R, W, X, and this multiple hyphens means who has access to these files. So for example, this hello takes the uh, I, so Igor, and from the group uh, Igor uh, has uh, all, I have all the, uh, the access. So I, I can read this, I can write, and I can also execute. Execute is kind of brutal word, but execute just means running a program. So uh, it, it is kind of strange that I can execute hello takes the, uh, but imagine that there is a program inside. So it is like an exit program on the window, Windows system. So right now, I am the only person who can actually access this. And for example, 
if Litka logs to, to the same computer, she can probably she can access this directory, but she will not be able to read any of these files because she is not uh, she's not me, right? So this Igor Igor means that only people, only me can ac access this, or uh, not even people from group Igor. This kind of strange. What does it mean, a group Igor? But I can make a file that I created, but it is of a different group. Um, we will not go really uh, very deeply to that because it is um, quite tricky topic. But um, there is there is some stuff that it is important. Uh, right now, let's stick uh, to uh, if, if somebody is following the README file. We are right now in the um, still on the navigating the terminal. So so there is quite uh, quite a lot of important and nice things to know. Uh, so one thing is uh, that let's imagine that you created a super nice command like a week ago and you so wish that you saved it uh, to your, I don't know, to some document because it was the best command you have ever written. Uh, but actually there is a way to see what you have written and this is a history command. Uh, so <laughs> on my computer <laughs> it is quite long. Uh, it is 21st, uh, 21,000 lines long. Uh, but this history command is a history of many of your commands. I don't want to say all, all of commands because actually it depends on you how long this history should be. Um, there is something called an environment variable in which you will state whether you're, you want the history to be long or short. I want it to be long because I'm quite forgetful and uh, sometimes I had nice commands written like half a year ago. But of course you see that by just, even by just mm, running this command, I get so many lines of code. Uh, but still, this history command is a command that shows you all of the things that you've written. Some of you may be curious what happens when you have multiple terminals running at the same time. Or for example, yeah, this is like a strange case. Imagine that you are using two terminals. So this command is quite basic and it will enable you to use the same history on a different terminal when you close the first terminal. So because actually it is just a file on, on, your, on your computer, there is, there is a file that the, the, all of these commands are written. But let's imagine that you have only one terminal running right now. And this history is a very nice command. So there is a command uh, 21,586 that I find very beautiful. It is a command that should be in the museum. Um, so maybe I want to run this command. Of course, I can uh, just copy this command. So. Of course, it is not so easy <laughs> uh, because when you write Control C uh, in terminal, the Control C on terminal means close. So when you when you use Control C, you will close your terminal. <laughs> it is good to know because sometimes you want to close your terminal. Control D. Uh, but control, yeah, there is also a com com uh, command called Control D, and this Control D is for logging out. And control C is for closing, so pretty much closing an application. When I put control C here, it will close some application, and then it will enable me to, to log out. So it is not the thing we want. If you actually want to copy stuff, you at least when you are on Ubuntu computer, but on many different um, Linuxes it works, you need to use control shift C. So I use control shift C. And then I use Control Shift and V, and this is like one way to copy from terminal and to terminal. So not Control V, but Control Shift V, and the same not Control C, but Control Shift C. But there is even better way, especially when you just want to run some command. And this is that you can put the explanation exclamation mark and the number of the command. So. This is the command, hopefully this is the command for the CDing. And it just runs this particular command. Uh, so I run a command from history. 
it is really good to know uh, when you have um, many commands and some of them are useful. I really suggest for those of you who um, think that they will repeat your commands to start by just copying them to some plates. Uh, in future, you you can start by uh, you can uh, just write a script. So the script is like a list of commands that you want to run. But right now, please know that there is a command called history, and you can go through this history. There is another important shortcut. It is Control Shift R, and this Control Shift R is a search through all of the commands you have written. So I really don't know why it is, uh, it is called reverse I search, but it is maybe reverse iterative search. But it is kind of esoteric command, but very important. It will enable you to search from the commands that have a particular word in it. So for example, hello found a command, echo. Uh, hello, everybody. So when I want to switch back, I want so the, I. You can even see right now in my history that I put the same command twice because I made a mistake. But when I want to go to the command before that that also used hello, I just use com, com, Control R. So this will run through all of the commands that have hello in it. There are many, many of these. And Control C means please stop. Let's go back to the uh, to the uh, terminal. Okay. So if you want to be cool, uh, you can use bang bang. Bang bang means repeat last command. It is kind of silly because why do you want to repeat last command? Uh, there is one very useful case. We will not go to detail for uh, for this right now, but sometimes you want to run a command as a super user. So uh, normally you, you use sudo for that. So when you will proceed with your knowledge of terminal, you'll probably find that it is quite important to sometimes use the sudo for a commands that can can change your computer in a particular way. So, um, for example, on a on a Ubuntu system, uh, apt get update is a command that will update. Nico, we have a question. Then could you repeat last command? Uh, the one <laughs> that's the question. Which which one was the last one? But if you want uh, the the reverse I search, or to do the reverse. So the to, to do the reverse I search you do control shift and R. It is not really a command, it is a shortcut. So you use control shift and R keys. You put them one after another. Control shift R. Yeah. And this command will give you this prompt. Reverse I search. Here I look for a commands, previous commands with some text. I can go through them using Control R. There are really many of them uh, in my case, uh, but this is quite uh, quite important uh, combination. Uh, so uh, coming back to the to the interesting use case, imagine that I want. To update my computer, I use apt get update, and it will give me this error because I am not a user that it is that has a permission to update my computer. But actually, I am a user that it is uh, capable of using this command. But I forgot a sudo. So the case that I'm usually using the sudo bang bang is right. It's just right that. So I put sudo bang bang. And this runs this apt get update with sudo before that. I need to put my password, and this will do some stuff. Let's let's not do that right now. Okay, so um, one more uh, important uh, comment uh, for those of you who stuff um, 
on terminal. There are many, many more. Really, power users do a lot of this. But when I have a command, so let's imagine that I wrote some command. But actually, I want to do to to change something. So maybe maybe I put a mistake here. So I have a mistake here, and I want to go to the beginning of the line. I have a, another shortcut, and this is Control A, and this shortcut will, will um, put me at the beginning of the line. There is another shortcut to go to the end of line, and this is Control E. So Control A, Control E. Um, there, there are actually many, many more of these commands, but these are these ones that are kind of nice to nice to understand. So this control A, control uh, control um, E. Instead of control E, you can use the end button on, on a keyboard if you have a keyboard with the end button. But it really depends on you. Right now, I used another command. So another shortcut. This is last of the shortcuts that are not really connected to um, anything um, super Linuxy. It is just a terminal uh, commands. And this is Control L, L. So letter L. Control L just cleans your um, just cleans your screen. So when I uh, when I have a lot of my screen. Maybe I don't want to show this. I have a control L command and it, it just cleans my screen. Okay, so let's now work with some files and directories. So, as I said, um, when, uh, let's go to the folder called exercise files. So, I did a change directory to exercise files. Right now, there are two files. Uh, ls gave you the uh, ls gave you the list of files mm, ls minus al gave you the mm, like a detailed list of files and for example right now there is this executable file so it it sounds interesting like maybe let's run this uh, this uh, file so for you, just to know, maybe let's start with the command called cut, uh, because uh, really it is a good practice when you receive a bash file to not run this without knowing what is inside. It is really good practice to know whether this file does not do anything stupid. So this cut command, uh, cut is actually a command uh, for concatenating. So to connect different files. We will be doing it afterwards, but the cat executable file will just show you the contents of this file. So this is the contents of this file. This is actually a bash script, and this bash script has like two lines, but one important line. And this is that it will just show you, this line will show you if you can execute it. There are, uh, there are two ways that you can execute the file. One way, if you know that it is a particular script, so for example, you know that this is a Python script, or you know that it is a bash script, or you know that it is a Perl script, for example, you just um, you just use the name of uh, the, um, the type of program you, you are using. So right now, bash and executable file. And this will run this. So I ask a bash interpreter to run executable file. But sometimes you don't really want to do this. You want um, to run this as a file, uh, to run this as just a normal program. So you don't really care that it is a bash program or Python program. Uh, there is another way to run this, and this is by putting the whole path. So in our case, the whole path would be quite long, but there is another shortcut, and the, the shortcut is dot slash. The dot slash means car current folder. So current folder executable file. And actually, when I put a x, it does not complete. So I'm repeatedly now clicking the tab key, and the tab key is not working. 
And this is because this file is not executable. You will really repeat this. So in your future Linux adventures, sometimes you will receive um, executable files. So you know that this is a program, but you will be not able to run this. And this is because you, are, you do not have permissions to run this. So there is an important command that you need to know, and this is change mod command. So the shortcut here is kind of awful because it is chmod, a change mode com command, which means you are asking the system to change permissions. So what we'll be doing, we will be using, uh, we will be putting letter u, which means user, in, in this case, me, because the command prompt is Igor. We will be adding plus x, which means please give me permissions to execute this file. And we will be putting the name of the file. So right now I'm changing, uh, I am changing the permissions to this file. There shouldn't be an errors. Let's see what happened here. And right now, executable file became green because it is an ex <laughs> executable file. And you can see that right now, uh, the first, uh, right now I have a permissions. So this, the, the second, the, the third and fourth um, characters changed. And I get the X property. This X means that I can now run this. So let's do it again. So I am putting dot slash executable and success. I was able to run this as an executable file. If I want for everybody to be able to run this, instead of putting U, I will be just doing the plus X. And this will run, the, this will make this, so for example, Litka can also run this command. So she can log to my computer and she can execute this file. Actually, right now the situation is quite strange uh, because Litka is able to execute this file, but she's not able to read this file. So it's kind of strange situation that she will be, she will not actually be able to execute this file because she is not able to read this file. So I can put multiple multiple letters. So right now you have three letters. You have X, you have R, and you have uh, Y. So right now, Ditka will be able not only to uh, execute this file, but also to read this file. Uh, you can see that I omitted the U. So without U, it means all of users. U means user. There is also group, and there is also O. So O means other, G means group, and U means user. It is really important. Right now, I think for some of you, it, it is kind of abstract. But this being able to execute a file, is something that really can make or break your day. Uh, OK, so right now, we are only working on the files that I created. So how can you create a file uh, on a Linux system? So one way is by just you know doing your stuff. So for example, you can uh, open uh, some text editor. I suggest that you start with just a normal graphical user interface text editors. I'm a fan of a genie, but there are so so many more um, that that you are using. Um, but let's imagine that you want to just make a, an empty file from terminal. So to do that, there is a strange command called touch. And this touch will make a empty file. So let's create empty ff takes there. So when I'm putting ls, I have right now three of these files. Normally, this will give me permissions to read and write to other users to read, write to, to people in my group to read, write and to other people to read. And right now we have an empty ff 
text. Why do you want to create an empty file? Um, sometimes it is a way to like a state of bug. Sometimes it's just a simpler, it is simpler to make an empty file and then fill this file. Uh, and sometimes it's just a way to do some stuff. So for example, you can put a file with a current date. In. So this is a touch command, which creates a file. How, how can you remove a file? So removing is rm, so remove. When I'm putting rm and the name of file, this will remove the file. So there is no longer empty ff. Uh, actually, uh, compared to a Windows system, uh, Linux is kind of more brutal because it will not ask you whether you want to remove this file or not. It just removes this file. So be aware of this, that in many cases, when the Windows system will, would ask you multiple times, are you sure that you want to do this? Linux will not do this. And also, this remove file command, the files do not go to a bin. So the, it is really very hard to for this file to come back. Um, sometimes it is even impossible. So for right now, you can imagine that removing actually removes file. So the question is, uh, OK, so uh, let's proceed with some other commands. So uh, we, right now, we know how to create an empty file, remove file, make dir, so mkdar. It's a command to creating a directory. So right now I created a directory. When I put ls, in my case, it becomes blue. So the directory is blue. The executable files are green. And other files are white, but there are no other files. So can I actually remove this directory? Not so much. Actually, removing without any flags will not enable you to remove a directory. It is just to remove files. There is a, a command uh, called rmdir, but it is kind of useless uh, command. I will show you why. When I, create a, when I create a directory, when I go to this directory, then I create a file. And so, so I created a file in this uh, directory. When I put the remove dir, it will give me this, this absurd command that it failed to, to remove the directory because directory is not empty. So actually, the removing directory using this command is only possible when the directory is not empty. Uh, I want to emphasize one thing. Uh, which is really like the key to this uh, whole seminar. You really need to read what the terminal is giving you compared to Windows system, when you usually can just click through the whole uh, wizard without reading anything. In, in case of Linux, it is super important to read what the system is giving you. So I put a command, remove directory, some directory, and it gave me an answer. But sorry, but it is impossible because directory is not empty. I don't really need to Google it anymore. Um, I just know that this is impossible because directory is not empty. Um, so uh, at least this command gave me this error. I just know that it is impossible, and I'm good to go to do something else. Sometimes it given it it, it even gives you some in, some tips how can you do something with that. And so in case of, for example, uh, some Python commands, you will get uh, information, ah, maybe you are not a super user. So it means that you have to start with sudo. So you know that right now that you will just put sudo bang bang. And this will repeat the same command, but as a super user. Um, so how can you remove a directory that has some files? The easiest way, but kind of maybe like a a bit dangerous is remove file and you put rf, which is two flags in the same time. One is uh, recursive and the other is forts. 
So this false means that it will not ask you a questions. So rm minus rf, and I'm doing some dir, and that's it. It, it deleted the directory and it deleted the files in this directory. Please do not do this. It is sometimes used to uh, destroy a newbie's computer because this command, the, uh, on some systems, this is one place that it will ask you whether you are sure. But this command means remove everything on your computer. Uh, so uh, when you say this, uh, that for example, let's imagine that you want uh, to, I don't know, uh, your uh, camera stopped working and you ask a question, what should I do because my camera stopped working? And somebody repeats, ah, just please put this command um, in terminal. <laughs> you know that they just want uh, you, you, they just want your computer to die. Really, if you don't read afterwards that uh, it is a dangerous command, this will destroy your computer. So let's not do that. I'm I'm using Control C to uh, to delete this. Okay, so uh, there are uh, more of this type. So uh, let's create more files. So I'm ju just putting. Right now there is this any file, so touch any file takes the, and I can copy this. So cp means copy, I'm copying any file, and I need to have a new name for this. So any file too. The copy commands means it will create a copy. Uh, when I want to uh, the, the, there will be two of these. There is another command means move uh, that it is move. Move will just move this command. Uh, there is yes. So uh, let's let's uh, keep the cache command to memory. Really, sometimes you can by using rm and some some stuff you can really do some nasty stuff to your computer. This is also why you need to read other people's scripts that you run on your system, especially the scripts that starts with sudo. When you need to put sudo and there is somebody's script, it really pays to read what is inside. And if you don't understand what is inside, maybe ask somebody who does. Okay, so move uh, any file dot txt and let's put a new name for this. So move will, instead of copying file, it will just move the file. I can also move the files to some other place on my computer. So I can right now, let's copy maybe. I will copy any file to, to for example, my home directory. So this will just copy to this directory. Uh, so this will copy to a home directory, and the name will be the same as it was. If I want to copy this with a new name, I will, uh, so uh, maybe I will copy this here. Th this uh, form, so dot dot slash, means let's go back to the directory one above, one below. So in this case, this will create a file in the directory bash workshop. Uh, so we will be copying any file uh, to the directory bash workshops. Yes, this this would copy direct. Uh, this would copy the file to the the same directory I am in, and this will copy to the one above. And without doing anything, this would copy this with the same name. So right now, I can read that there is this ls. Dot dot means let's read the contents of a directory that it is one below. You can imagine this as a tree. And this tree goes and goes and goes. Sometimes you call this uh, below and then you go to the root of this tree. Right? The idea is that the slash is just the root of the tree. So right now uh, ls dot dot means let's 
read the contents of a directory one below the one that we are in and i copied a file there okay so there is also you can read uh, on the readme that there is also a way to make a uh, links that, uh, but let's not do this today but there there are different kinds of links the links are much more powerful than the ones used on windows on windows link is just a way to like um just make a shortcut but on a, a linux system you can actually force the system to like uh, it's much more powerful but also kind of hard to get around so uh, you can read about hard links and symbolic links uh, symbolic links is something that i use pretty much 100 percent but there's also something called hard okay so uh, now um, does cp rewrite yes it does there are no warnings in these cases yes you can uh, cp also move it it will just overwrite the stuff that you have you rarely have this kind of um, comfort that windows gives you that will ask you multiple times you can have this using the um, gui versions of system so ubuntu when you use so in my case i, I use something called nautilus uh, it is uh, now actually on this system i use pacman fm so pacman file manager but normally on a, on a ubuntu system you will have nautilus it will ask you when you are doing stuff like that on a terminal no it is also very convenient because you don't need to put multiple times yes 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 uh, but as you imagine it can be dangerous so yes copying it is very easy to overwrite the same with moving strangely enough um, with making symbolic links it will not enable you to, to make the symbolic links but it's just mm, the case so uh, this uh, this wraps up the, the part with uh, directories so i hope that you can for example make a new directory called exercise one and in this directory can you make a file called file number two uh, <laughs> yes uh, uh, yes minus uh, a is an interactive flag in many uh, scripts you actually have this interactive flag and it will ask you more questions Actually, I have not ever used this flag, but at least some people do. So uh, Kasia is probably uh, better uh, than I am with this. Uh, but yes, in many in many um, comments, you have this minus i, which means interactive flag. So it will ask you more questions. The same with uh, deleting. If you remove the force flag, it is kind of forcing the interactivity but i rarely use it uh, okay so let's now um, go but this will be pretty much a guided tour so you can imagine that you are in uh, uh, venice or florence and i'm showing you a museum in which there are many interesting programs this is just a beginner's workshop so this is more a way for you to understand uh, what is possible and how can you access this uh, or what should you google this is pretty much the um, this part i will be talking right now it will be not so long part uh, but uh, uh, but this is uh, kind of important yes aliasing uh, kasia uh, kasia commented about alias i do not recommend this for the super beginners because it's, it is more important to understand what you are doing at the beginning Afterwards, yes, alias is like a shortcut for a particular command. So, for example, in my system, there is a command called Hion, which is a short for history and prep. Um, but uh, I don't know. I am really not sure about using aliases, especially if you use multiple computers. When you use multiple computers, it is good that you stick to the commands that are frequently there. But of course, there are also many people from the Linux community, 
who will say that if you do not customize your computer, it means that you don't have soul. <laughs> because, like, uh, why not make your, for example, background of your terminal blue? Or why not to make some super cool commands as aliases? In my case, because I work on so many different computers, I tend to stick to a standard commands because I know that they are in on all computers I have. But it is really a matter of personal preference. If you have your favorite uh, laptop and you know that you will be running this, please customize to your pleasure. Um, but really, it, it depends. So OK, let's start with, uh, with our tour. Our tour would start with the strange programs. And these are programs connected to uh, your computer itself. So there is a command. <laughs> there is command called ps, and this ps, and especially the ps and aux, is a command that you will be running when your computer is doing something strange. So let's imagine that you opened uh, Chrome too many times. So you opened Chrome one million times. I have thirty-two gigabytes of RAM on the computer, and I still managed to have too many opened windows. On Chrome, uh, so what do you do in this case? So you you notice that your computer became strange, uh, became very slow, and you want to know what uh, is probably causing it. So when you put PS, it will show you uh, all of running programs, but only when you put a good flags. So I usually put flags A U X. And now I can see all of the processes on my computer. And I can see, for example, that there are multiple Chromes uh, here. So yeah, probably there are multiple windows open. And maybe this is causing my computer to become very, very uh, slow. Uh, so there is another command. Uh, I think I can even run it now. And it is called kill all. <laughs> Kill all is kind of sad command, but it means please kill all of processes that have particular word in it. So right now I killed all of Chrome's on my computer. I know that it is a strange thing to start, but I'm kind of sure that you will be running this command sooner or later. Um, you can also use, instead of kill all, you can be nicer to your the processes and you will put kill and that the number that you are willing to kill. So kill and 28522 will kill in my case probably uh, some network device. So I'm not willing to do this. Uh, but um, uh, PS is similar to HTOP. Yes, HTOP is actually just a nicer way to show the same stuff. So also from here you can you can you can go. Uh, pretty much the same. PS minus AUX is just a just a simpler way to do this. Uh, command that you can be from from completely different part of the computer date is a command to show you current date. This current date will be in a format that your computer right now has. So I'm in Central Eastern time, and this is a Polish date. So this is just a Polish format of a date. But of course, if, if, if your computer is a French, you will, you will see some French uh, words here, um, and so on, so on. Uh, also, cal is actually calendar, not calculator. Sometimes it is useful. Um, this kind of commands, um, sometimes administrators of computers run. So when you, have, um, when you have a computer and you want to show to your user some interesting information at the beginning. Cal is one of the stuff that I frequently see. Uh, it is just a way that, um, uh, just a way to, to see the command. Yes, of course, as, as for the command for the htop command, it is just a very powerful command, so we will not go to the detail with that. I just show you the, the way that uh, 
I use it, but uh, of course, uh, HTOP is more a way to diagnose your compute. And uh, PS minus AUX is just a way to see the current running processes. Uh, no, no. Giorkela, no, they are not the same. The, you cannot really, I am not sure whether you can force the program, but no, I would not uh, depend on that. Okay, so date and, cal and cal calendar, uh, <laughs> date and calendar are comments for showing time. Um, SSH is a command uh, to connect to a, a different computer. So I had a discussion, how can I show it to you? Because you really have to have a computer to connect to. Uh, but if you put something like that on your terminal, maybe not now, but afterwards, there is a free computer that you are able to access. There is a there is an institution called SDF, and they enable you to set up account for their service using SSH. SSH is a way to create a secure tunnel to a different computer. So for example, um, I can mm, connect to myself because this computer that I'm running right now has an SSH server. Uh, and <laughs> this enabled me to log in to my own computer. And as you see, there is an information to me for me uh, about some stuff. Uh, and right now I log logged into my own computer. If you want to be able to do that, uh, you need to um, install an SSH server. So not really a time to do that, uh, but uh, commonly you what you do is that uh, you put SSH, name of the user, name of the host. Uh, so for example, uh, this is some computers that I, that I have, or for example, that I blocked, because in the same place you can also block some computers. Uh, and I can, for example, connect to, to some computer from my work. So this is a way that you, I can connect to a different computer. And you can see that after putting SSH, the name of host, uh, the host name changes. And it is really a good thing, because right now I'm in a different computer from a market lab company that I'm working in. And uh, the only difference between the, my own computer and this computer is the different host name. When I want to log out of this computer, I use Control D. So Control D will log me out of this. I think it will be hard for people who don't have access to different computers to check it right now, but be aware that SSH is a way to connect to different computers. And there is also a called command called SCP, so secure copy. Um, maybe now it is a good uh, time to introduce this command. Man is a manual. So when I put man before most of the commands, it will show me a manual of this command. So for example, SCP uh, is uh, this. So this gives, this gives me a very nice but kind of detailed introduction to a command meaning SCP. So in this case, SCP, uh, you can see that there is a, um, it means secure copy, and it, it has so many different flags to use. Uh, but uh, it, sometimes it is uh, nice to read this uh, this kind of manual. Not always, because uh, I am not really sure whether you can uh, understand this command by just reading the, the manual. Uh, but for some commands, you can. In this case, we will be putting SCP. What you usually put is that this SCP will be putting the user host. Uh, so from where to where. But let's proceed because the time is kind of running out. 
unfortunately. The comment I really wanted to introduce to you, because in your, your discipline, this is very important to be able to do that. It's, this is a pretty much the case that Litka has. Imagine that you have a server computer. And on this server computer, you want to log in. Then you want to start a command. Then you want to do something else when the command is running. You are not really sure that you will be able to keep the connection to this computer. And when the connection breaks and you have a running, uh, running program on a different computer, this command stops. So with this kind of set, you can imagine that there is a command that will be running for 10 hours. Litka is doing some files that, you know, you, you take a 30 gigabytes file, you do some stuff with it, and after 10 hours, you get the result even on server, right? So there is a super, like two, two programs, but I will introduce only one of these. It is called screen. When I put screen, so let's put screen minus R, this time from big letter R. Um, this will start a, like a new session in this program. Um, uh, cannot make directory screen, that's interesting. Uh, there is probably some error, my mm. ah, because I'm on the different. Oh no! Give me a second because I broke my terminal. Mm -hmm. You got it? Yeah, your stream is closed. My stream is closed. Oh no! Am I? Okay, <laughs> so w once again, once again, hopefully my uh, terminal, you, you can see my terminal. Uh, I will be putting the screen command minus R, and I will be putting the name of this screen. Let's maybe make it bigger. Can you? I wonder whether you can see the change. So screen minus R test screen. The same here. That's interesting. Uh, so yeah. Uh, probably I have something broken with the. Uh, but let's imagine that you don't see the root, but you just see the Igor here. Uh, for your information, when you switch to a root, so when there is a special user on your computer, and this special user has pretty much all of the permissions he wants, so he can really break stuff. So I'm not really comfortable uh, by using root, but. Um, uh, probably while updating the screen uh, had some bug. Um, but let's imagine that this is just a normal user. And this normal user can now run some commands. Mm. So, so I did run some commands. And now I can log out, uh, but in a way that will not destroy this terminal. And this uh, is done by using control AD. It is kind of bothersome to do because you don't really put all of the three letters together, but first you click control, then I, uh, maybe control A and then D. So it is kind of something that you have to memory, uh, like muscle memory, that you put control A and then you put D. It's kind of strange, but you you will get this command detached from a test screen. And when I put screen minus s, maybe in my case again with sudo, oh, what is happening? Yeah. I see that I have some some errors, unfortunately. Um, but let's start again. Minus. 
Maybe, maybe it was the other way around. Ah. Okay. Okay, so you can see here that I made some but the idea right now is like that. By using screen minus s, I created a session. So not minus r, but minus s. I created a new session. So this session means that there is a terminal running in background that I can access and I can log into and log out to. But what happens when I log out? So the log logging out from screen is called detaching. So this is why I put AD, it means detaching means that still there, there can be application running uh, in, in background. So I can put control AD even when there is an application running. So for example, Lika can run some super big script and just put control AD and she will detach. And after a couple of hours, she will, for example, go to the same screen and everything will be still running. So control AD and uh, control and uh, yes, yeah, so minus R minus S. Very nice command, uh, but uh, it will take time to, uh, for you to to use R sync. So let's let's proceed with some nice commands. R sync is a command when you want to copy. Uh, files, but in a way that only copies the files that changed. Uh, I I cannot really go to a de detail of that, but it is still the pretty much the case that I or Litka have. In my case, I have a directory that has six terabytes of data, and uh, I download. Um, I have the same directory on two computers. And when I download to one of these directories and I want to synchronize the second one, I want just to copy the stuff that changed. And you can easily do this by rsync. The rsync is also a great way to make a backup of your data. So if you want to have, and you really need to do backup of your data, uh, you use the rsync command. So please just use rsync and backup and you will see some nice examples. Uh, Chrome. Is also a kind of strange command. You usually put cron minus e, uh, cron, cron tab, sorry, cron tab minus e. And this is a command that enables you to do tasks uh, to run at a particular time. So, for example, I want uh, every day to have some command. So, for example, a backup to run. Uh, mm, so no hub. I don't really know no hub. About screen. So uh, if you uh, the, the, a different program screen is called uh, Tmax. There are two competitors, screen and Tmax. I uh, the screen and Tmax are uh, commands that enable you to do much more than what I explained. For example, you can have multiple people observing the same sessions. It's really super powerful commands, but for right now it is just for you to know that this command exists. It has many different options, and the nicest use case is that you can run a command and detach or attach to the terminal on a different computer or and or in the on the same computer. Okay, so this cron tab, uh, also you really need to read about this, but uh, the idea how it works is that will um, you create a row of data and each of these stars can be changed uh, to, uh, that it can change the, uh, to a particular, so for example, here you put minutes, here you put hours, then you can put a, a whole date. and in previously, because right now everything was connected, for example, I made a command that every minute compiled a, a LaTeX file. So I was creating an, an, a paper and I wanted to have a, a, a command to compile this. Of course, you can do it in many different ways, but this is a perfect place to put a backup. So this is, for example, a way that will create a a backup of your home directory 
at 5 a.m. every day. Okay, so you noticed uh, that I put uh, this this shortcut. So, um, and this shortcut comes from Vim program. Uh, Vim is a way to modify files inside of terminal. So maybe I will cd to this above a bash and bash workshop, and let's uh, edit this any file. Uh, right now, the most important part of Vim is how do you exit Vim, uh, because uh, the, 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 there is a running joke that you. Uh, this makes you like a super powerful user if you are capable of exiting Vim. But actually, many shortcuts coming from Vim are frequently used in different programs in on Linux. So right now, uh, to exit Vim, you you do this. Uh, <laughs> so you just quit. So you, you first you put the, what is the name of this mark? Uh, I, I forgot the name of the mark, but you put quit and you can quit. Actually, it's not so easy when first you put some data. So for example, I wrote hello world. And then I want to exit this. And I, for example, click Control C and nothing works. And I'm super frustrated and I'm asking help. And I, I remember that I can put, that I can do Control Quit. But I get this, I get this no write since last change. And so the computer really doesn't want me to exit Vim. And I somehow start to believe that I will be always stuck to the to the Vim. So actually, there is a way to force this. And of course, the Vim is saying what you should do, that you should add the exclamation mark. So please really read the commands, especially in panic. So when you put some strange command and the computer turns red, read, the com read what the computer is writing. So here the computer is saying, please add quote, uh, the uh, exclamation mark. So this means that uh, this is how you exit Vim. Really, because we have uh, half an hour, I will not go into detail in Vim. I actually use Vim frequently. I like Vim, but it is not a program for the beginners. If you want to edit something uh, as a beginner, please install Nano. Uh, Na Nano is more basic one. It's still it is not super basic because how do you exit this? But uh, in this case, you just use Control and the uh, things that are in the bottom. So, for example, if I want to save this, uh, how do I how do I save? I can, for example, use Control X, and it will ask me. Do I want to save the modified buffer? Modified buffer is just a nice way to to say the stuff you have in memory right now. And when I say yes, it will enable me to save. So please start with Nano. Vim, it is more important to know that Vim exists and that uh, some users use it. And if you want to... For example, you because of COVID, you cannot go to your uh, favorite destination for holidays. Instead of going to this destination, you can learn Vim. It will probably take you the same amount of time. But it will be a time well spent. OK, so the last command uh, is a command called Kausai. I use this command quite frequently because it enables you to be friendly. Uh, Kausai is a command that you just put Kausai and then what you want to say. Uh, we will show that there is a different way to access Kausai and it will present this beautiful cow uh, and uh, it will show you the, the cow. Actually, it doesn't have to be cow. Uh, cow thing. Uh, you can also put, uh, there, are, there is something called cow files. And the, for the power users of you, you can try as an exercise to make a dark 
Vader or a Linux, uh, Linux tax to say something, because it doesn't really need to be cow. But the other, uh, it will be still be a cow dark Vader and cow Linux. Okay, so right right now we will uh, get to a point that some of you will be using the terminal most frequently. Uh, especially when I look at Litka when she's working, uh, she's using the text analysis tools a lot. Actually, in my uh, work, I use it more as a help tools on when I'm looking for something, not so much in everyday work, because I tend to stick to Python. But it really depends on the type of work you do. So it is really good to know some basic commands. These commands right now will be mostly focusing on a, a way you can access text files. Uh, so first one, uh, so the, the one that we already have seen, it is the cat command. So the cat command uh, will show you the contents of file. But um, actually, the cat command uh, is also used to connect two files together. So if I go to exercise text folder, I have some nice folders. So cat random likes. I see some file. I like eggs. I like bananas. I like devices. So I, could, I can put random likes, random likes, and it will make this files the, this file to one. So twice the file will make uh, one larger file. But it will not actually make file. What you see in right now, it is just an output to a screen. This is because it is very easy to get from the screen output to a file. And to do that, you make an arrow, and you put a name. So cut, pa 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 pa, arrow, result, txt will make this result to a file. So this is a way to save the output. So when I put ls, it will save the output to a list text. So less, um, let's maybe make it okay so multiple times so when i read the result eh, it's still kind of too short so let's do this uh, result okay so right now this file this file became empty oh no so anyway less is a way that you can uh, access a long files so when i have for example on all of your systems there is file called bashrc so tilde slash dot bash rc it is really long file and right now you can see only a part of it because the other parts did not fit the screen. So you see only the, the last part. But when I use less, I can go through this file line by line. So it is a way to just see the file. I can also go, right now I'm clicking page down, and it is a way that I can go page by page. When I want to exit this, I put the Q letter. So Q letter to exit the less. Okay, so I have this. Um, Litka provided us with some files from her work. And these are, of course, very short versions of this. But I can, for example, see the short bed. Still, they are quite long. So I can, for example, put less for the short bed, and I will, and I can come line by line, or page by page. There is a command called head, and the command head will show you just the first, I think, 10 lines of this file. Um, 
and there is a command called tail, which will show you the last lines of this file. I can also use a command called word count. And this uh, is kind of strange because I asked for word count and it gave me three outputs. And it's actually, actually we, we are getting more than we expected uh, because we'll be also getting the number, uh, the number not only of, uh, of uh, lines, but also of letters and words. And so when, when we want to have just the number of lines, we are putting minus L. And this will show us this, that the file short.bet has 51 lines. Um, mm, long sequence files. So actually, uh, less will uh, works on, on streams of data. So you can even have like billions of lines because it will all, only show you the some screen of data. So it is a really nice command when you have like a really uh, a whole stream of data. But it is just for showing. So the less is <laughs> opposite of more. <laughs> uh, it, it just shows you some parts of this. So it is like a, a limited version of a text editor. Uh, OK. So uh, we, right now we have 20 minutes left, around 20 minutes left. Uh, so uh, there are three very powerful commands connected to a text edition. One is called grep, the other is called sed or sed, and the last one is called awk. Three of them have um, different purposes. Mm. We provided you with some uh, examples in the readme uh, of what can you do. Um, but they are really, I cannot say that they are self-explanatory, but maybe on these examples, I will show you the basic use cases. So grep is a command to searching for stuff. So we have a file co uh, called short.fastq, which is a file uh, with uh, some DNA data, right? Yes, yes, yes. It is with the DNA data, right? Uh, so uh, let's let's maybe see this this file. So it looks like that, and we can see that there are some lines with actual you know letters, uh, and maybe we're interested in, for example, finding every line that has a particular sequence of these letters. Uh, so the way we are doing this is we use crep, then we put this sequence of letters. So ttctc and the name of file. And it will show us the uh, lines with this particular sequence. Actually, this ttctc can be a whole pattern. So there is something called regex. I'm sure that some of you are familiar with regex. And you can put some super complicated patterns here. We totally will not go to detail uh, to that. The main idea of grep is it is for searching stuff in files. It doesn't necessarily need to be one file. There is a way to look for all of files in some particular place. It is called globbing. So when I put star here, it will search for this pattern in all files in this directory. And it will even give me a name that actually this pattern can be found only in, in this file. But it actually looked for all pattern, all files in this directory. This globbing is like a simplified version of regex. It pretty much just enables you to um, to do some stuff like, for example, please look for ttctc in all files starting with show. And of course, these are the same, uh, the same files. You you will have many more examples uh, of grep in the readme. Please go through this. Uh, for example, like minus 
we will show you um, will show you all of the lines that do not match this pattern. Okay, the, another uh, program is called SED. SED, like rep is for searching and SED is for editing. So the idea here is that you have this stream of data. So in, in biology, it is very easy to get like, for example, 30 gigabytes of data. And you can imagine that computer can run through this data line by line. So it does not care that there is 30 billion data. It just cares about particular line. It is, of course, also limitation because you can really you cannot really compare first line with line number 10,000 using this approach. But if you just care about doing stuff line by line, this is a perfect approach to you. So this SED, uh, it is a stream edit. So editing a stream of data can enable you to find stuff, but for finding, grep is better. But what is more important, editing files. So um, we have this file called random likes. And if you want to edit this file, for example, this line is like the simplest use case of, of uh, stream edit. S uh, will, will, will mean substitute, and we will be substituting like with love. This, this stuff, you can notice the same ca comes with prep and the same comes with the next pro program called uh, AWK. This is like a mini language. So unfortunately, we cannot go into detail. But the case with all of these three programs is that actually they are mini languages. So they are languages like Python or R. So in this case, we are using uh, SED to substitute like for love line by line in this file. So each line became modified. You can also see that, for example, last line became modified, but in a way that some people do not expect because there was two likes and only the first one became love. And this is because we need to put some flag to make every uh, occurrence of this uh, word to, to change. So still in the readme, you have more examples. Particularly interesting are the examples that you can actually use um, counting. So you can, for example, uh, only have particular line to be changed, or you can delete stuff, you can edit stuff, you can substitute. There is really a whole language behind it. So you can, for example, change pattern to pattern. But of course, this is a beginner's workshop. So I hope that you just become interested in these tools and in future, you will, on your own pace, continue with studying this. Because really, it is also like a SED, grab an AWK, it's something for a weekend of work, at least. So you can imagine, you know, that there is a rainy weekend, and instead of going somewhere, you study this free program. So the last of these programs um, works great with tabular data. So we have this tabular data. Uh, this is this GFF free format. Uh, you can see that this is actually like a table. So uh, you, uh, usually you, you have more separated files. In this case, it is separate by tab. Um, but what you care about the, is that there is a separation and you have rows of data. So AWK is just for this. It is for working on a tabular data. Um, so for example, this command uh, will print you the second, so actually the, yeah, the second column of this. Uh, how does uh, it know that it is a second column? Uh, by default, tab and space means column. You can change it to an, a different uh, separator, but it's not uh, time for this. AWK is also a language. You can make some really strange stuff. So uh, you can, it's a whole language in itself. The most important part, at least from my perspective, is that they are kind of old, these languages. And I really suggest you to first learn uh, how to do this, for example, in Pandas or in R, 
Um, and this, uh, what you really need to understand is not to be afraid of this and use it when you need to. Uh, but for example, many scripts that are in uh, bioinformatics are actually using these tools. So when you want to modify some people's scripts, um, you will um, use these uh, commands because they are nice. Um, I use them frequently when I'm working with system. So for example, when I want to search files or when I want to modify file names or something like that, they are perfect. Um, also when I have really huge files. So like when, when you go to gigabytes and terabytes uh, and stuff does not fit uh, memory of your computer, I mean RAM, th these are perfect tools because they do not require the, to the file to fit to the whole memory. You just need like a one line of this file. So this is perfect when you have a streams of data. And going to streams of data, uh, there is something called piping. We started using pipes, and pipes are like basics of Unix, but they are kind of tricky. The idea here is that you have like this text. I read one line of this text, I put this in on pipe, it goes through the pipe, it goes out of the pipe, and then I do second line with third line and so on. So piping is super a super good idea uh, when you have this, um, when you have a lot of data, and you want to put this data through set of filters. Uh, so the easiest, the easiest uh, starting point is uh, the starting point that we had, that we have this cat command. Uh, so this is the cat command displays you something on a screen. And I can, I can pipe this output to a file. So we know this. This will put the output of list takes that to another file. When I put this, instead of, um, instead of just uh, saving this to a file, it will actually put it at the end of the file. So these are really like basic cases of piping because they don't go through multiple steps. This is just the last step. Please put the output to a file. Uh, but for example, when I have one command, and so let's imagine that I have command ls. So uh, well, maybe ls is uh, not such a good uh, example, but I have the command uh, called, uh, let's stick with ls. So I have ls, which just gives me the list of files. I now can use a special sign called pipe. So the pipe is just this, this thing is called pipe in Unix. This means please take the output and let's do something with this output. So the, the case I can use is for example, is for example, let's find in this, in this stream of data, every line that has list in it. And it's surely there is one called list uh, dot takes step. So what actually happened is I take one stream, I put the stream from another command. Most of the typical terminal commands enable you uh, to take as an output, as an input, a stream of data coming from somewhere else. Okay, so there is really a lot uh, to start with this. Uh, maybe I will just give you uh, an example to play with. So I'm creating, uh, I'm creating, uh, just a stream of data. This stream of data has two lines. The first line is example text, the second line is some new line. I'm looking for each occurrence of uh, text and I'm in next command is just counting how many uh, lines this, this output uh, found. So it found one output. You can play around with this and for example, try to uh, count how many files of, for example, how many POM bases are there? How can you do this, right? You, you will, for example, cut this. So you will use AWK to just um, output a third column. And then using this third column, you will use the WC command uh, to count the number of files. So we are nearing the end of this seminar. 
actually there is a whole uh, different use of bash as a language so bash uh, everything we were doing right now is actually part of bash because this is just a bash enables you to use shell uh, enables you to use uh, some programs that are on your computer so by writing anything right now we are interacting with bash the point right now is now is that instead of writing on terminal i can write these commands to file and i can run these commands um, as um, uh, a set of commands so for example uh, maybe on your case it would be i will create a file called some commands And this this will be, for example, three commands, one after another. So I wrote a file called some commands. And now I can use bash some commands to run these commands. So this actually, there were only three commands. So the first, please write hello. The second, please write hello too. And the third one, please list the files. But you can imagine that actually, because I have access to the whole system, I can create a whole new program by just stating these commands one after another. But because Bash is actually a language, I can also use the typical language features. So for example, I can put conditionals, I can put a while loops and so on. Uh, I gave you some examples in the readme. Uh, I think the fun ones is that, for example, you can run a command for each line of a text file. There is an example like that. Uh, or you can put a command uh, for uh, each file in some directory. Uh, when you go to the exercise bash, you have this, uh, this for bash example. And when I do this, uh, this for bash example, uh, it uses a file called namestate.txt, and for each name in this file, it will put a sentence. Kind of basic example, uh, but uh, what usually happens is that you have, for example, a list of files, and on each of these files, you want to do something and save it as a file with a different. Uh, uh, with a different name. So I take a file with a particular format, I use some formatter, I the format changes and so on so on. And instead of you writing typing this on terminal, you have uh, and this script that for example takes as an input um, a text file. Uh, also uh, I can create a input and conditionals. So for example, here, uh, it is very easy to get an argument from uh, from bash. So for example, when I have this uh, dollar sign and one, it, will, it means that please take the first argument and do something with it. So there was a, a question during the seminar, do flags always work? Actually, for this script, the flag would be useless because it doesn't really understand that there is a flag. It just takes the first argument by argument, meaning something after space. So when I put input conditionals and I print hello here, it asks me for a name because there is a different way to read by using read. And it puts just, just this. You can try uh, to see whether you can force the script to uh, output something different, because if you put the right word as an argument, and the conditional would change. But right now, another recommendation from kind of experienced programmer is bash is pain in the ass. It is kind of hard to use, uh, even if you know the uh, it because it is kind of old language. So my recommendation is if you need to, please use bash. 
but if you can write something new, please to stick to a new languages. So like Python, um, even Perl, uh, because Bash is not super um, f user friendly. It is not, the most frequent use case is something that you will give user to, for example, modify files. So something that also interacts with uh, interacts with file system. If you don't really need to interact with file system, uh, so the case is I take a file, I put it through some program, I output a file, and so on, so on, so on. Please use some other languages because this one is not super easy. Nice to, to have. So the wrap up is pretty much uh, this. Uh, I uh, think that uh, we went through a lot. At least my uh, <laughs> my body went through a lot uh, because I got uh, quite tired. Uh, the whole point about the terminal is that by writing these commands and especially by putting these commands together, you can make something very powerful. Um, what we didn't uh, introduce here is that everything is a file and everything you can modify through, uh, through Bash. Um, so you can modify some settings. You can modify the way your computer behaves. You can modify uh, the way uh, your computer can be accessed. So by and especially by connecting this this multiple pipes together because the the idea of pipes is really excellent um, this can also be used in different languages but especially in unix the idea of pipes is something that is super super powerful um, and it is something that i encourage you to explore it really takes time to do this but it is time worth spent so don't expect that tomorrow you uh, you will learn this, but expect that if you learn this, you will you are on a good way to become a, like a really good uh, bioinformatician and computer scientist, uh, and you will have really enjoyable time. Especially if you are keen of customizing, this is also a way to go, and it, it can be a great adventure, uh, even uh, doing it for fun, because it gives you so much control. So you are like uh, not uh, somebody sitting uh, sitting on a plane and saying, "Oh, I'm so crampy. There is uh, so little space." But you uh, become you become pilot. So let's fly to a nice place. <laughs> At least now, when uh, flying by using computer is the, the way to go. And uh, maybe if some of you can uh, want to ask some questions, uh, we can have a super mini session. But I guess that most of you are kind of tired. Mm, please go through readme uh, because I focused on the basics of basics, but there is a bit more in the readme, uh, and I hope you will have a great time with Linux and Terminal. Okay, yeah, this is kind of a nice question. Uh, so um, me using Linux in my in my job. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm doing machine learning, uh, especially connected to, to vision. Uh, so uh, I have something like 40 million images, uh, around 40 million images. So uh, what, for example, I want to do, and each of these images has some description as an XML file. Uh, so what uh, what I do using, uh, using terminal is, uh, I have like a simple script that just takes this XML, finds a JPEG, and outputs this uh, to a line of CSV file. And in this way, I can create a whole table, but just line by line. Imagine that there are 40 million examples, and each of these examples has multiple lines, actually. But I, after some time, I get one CSV file that connects all together. Um, a different example is that on all, all my computer, there are some cron jobs. So the cron job is a, a program that runs uh, every couple of hours or every day. Uh, maybe not on this home computer, but on the servers that I have. Uh, they do some stuff. Um, <laughs> maybe in future, uh, we can talk about some other use cases. Normally, I uh, have my computers as a kind of closed box in something called a container. 
so in Docker containers. Uh, in this way, I can have like a separate computer inside of a inside of a computer. Uh, other than that, uh, I use Linux uh, to run servers. So servers are pretty much computers that many people can access. This is, I think, the best definition of uh, something that is a server. Uh, so, uh, for example, these are used to run websites. Uh, to uh, I have people to, who can access these through them smartphones uh, because it is uh, quite quite big. Uh, it's actually in retail business. I have two jobs. One is on the academia, and here I la run Linux and robots. Uh, you can imagine uh, here is a robot with a Linux system, uh, so like a small robot with a computer here. Um, and on my second job, I use Linux to so-called big data, when you have multiple terabytes of data. And really, the only way to do something with it is uh, by streaming this data. So by using this line-by-line line line approach, not taking everything in one place, because really it does not fit memory. So uh, 64 gigabytes of memory, 100 gigabytes of just not enough for this. So I hope this answered your question. It is really fun to use. So I use Linux for right now for seven years, like in my everyday job. So I stopped using Windows. I just use Linux. Uh, and it is really, you can use everything by Linux. I do not recommend by just using Terminal. Normally, I have a, a system, uh, like Windows-like system, but uh, pretty much when I want to do something serious, I always use this Control alt t shortcut and start Terminal. So any other questions? Yes. Uh, cheers for everybody. Uh, I'm very happy that you came from so many different countries. I think it is uh, good to, that we can you know, uh, come together, talk. Uh, at least uh, interactively. Uh, from Python, right? Uh, so uh, I s actually started Python uh, through the Udacity, one of the Udacity courses. Uh, there was, uh, there are some good courses on. Uh, maybe, you, maybe we can share some list afterwards on uh, on Discord. I think it will be the best, uh, the best case. Because yeah, many people are specialists uh, by Python. As you can see, I'm a Python fan and I use Python frequently. But uh, the best case is for uh, to share this on Discord and afterwards uh, through the second seminar. So, any any other questions? Okay, if not, please uh, wrap up the, the seminar. So maybe Shimon can say some final words. Yes, thank you very much. This is a great seminar. <clears throat> I think everyone can agree. Yeah, we had a lot of questions. And <clears throat> uh, yeah, thank you very much once again. And on the topic of Python, yes, we do have uh, the next seminar. <clears throat> Uh, next week, next Thursday, basically the same time. So you are all also invited to uh, to join us. Okay. So from my thank you very much, and see you next time. Thanks for organizing this. So bye everybody.